what I hope to do today is take you through a little bit of Columbus McKinnon's uh, CPQ journey. Um, through this presentation, I may use the term either channel partners or distributors in place of deal or network. Often in Columbus McKinnon, we refer to our, our channel partners, distributors, customers, um, using those terms and not so much deal or network. So just mentioning that in advance uh, so I don't lose anyone as I'm going. Also, as mentioned, please feel free to submit questions. We'll do our best. Uh, John and I will do our best to answer them. First and foremost, Columbus McKinnon may not be a name that most of you recognize. Uh, we are a house of brands and shown here are many of our global brands that we bring forward into the market. We are a global manufacturer of material handling and motion control products. Um, we are the second largest hoist company in the world with leading US share in several different product families. Our products really fall in three core areas. Um, our industrial products groups, is a bit more of what you would consider standard product and configure to order product. That's a lot of the more manual products like lever and hand chain hoists, our electric chain hoist or air hoist, rigging, clamps, industrial winches. You're more standard and configured product, a little bit less on the ETO side. Moving to the left there, our crane solutions group. This is your larger wire rope hoist, crane systems, um, and all the elements that go on an overhead crane, things like festooning, uh, conductor bar, radios, pendants, uh, drive systems. We also manufacture and sell uh, jib cranes, uh, closed track workstation cranes. These products, uh, some of it is standard product, a large percentage is configured, and then there's a fair amount of engineer to order product as well. Our last area on the top there is our engineer products group. That is largely uh, linear mechanical actuators, rotary unions, and then taking those products and creating actuation systems. Uh, we have a large rail and road business, which is actually the picture shared there, where we utilize our products to create systems to help lift the carriages of trains uh, for maintenance activities. Um, again, here a fair amount of standard products, certainly configured, and then obviously larger engineered solutions altogether. At Columbus McKinnon, yes, we make these products, but we really try to focus ourselves as, on helping our customers solve their problems. Uh, we go to market as a lifting specialist, designing solutions to help them develop and implement complex applications. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on this solution expertise, and this is really what drives Columbus McKinnon forward every day, helping our customers solve their high value problems. Which brings me on to Compass. Compass is Columbus McKinnon's configure price quote tool. It, while we certainly have a, a fair amount of standard product, as I've mentioned multiple times, we also have a large amount of configure product, and that was really the genesis behind developing and implementing Compasses. In many cases in Compass, it's not just the configuration of a single product, it's the incorporation of multiple configure products into what we would call a system or a kit. And that's really one of the core elements of Compass, not just to configure one, but to configure many and bring them all together. Compass is a classic configure price quote tool. It includes the pricing, the pricing of the customer, the channel partner, um, full quote package documentation, lead times to the product you have configured, and then drawings. As you configure in Compass, it creates uh, a data string, a bar set that we then pass on and create a 3D model of what you have just configured and then allow our customers to download those drawings so they can use them either in their larger drawing package or wherever they need to in, to approach their end customer. Compass is certainly a channel uh, partner distributor facing tool and it is used widely in our buyer internal customer service as well um, for quote generation. So a little bit more on Compass. Um, the initiative was launched in 2016 with us, our first go live in mid-2017. Um, it was really driven by what we saw, the evolving environment of digital tools. Um, I think we all see the digital natives out there in the workforce now demanding these tools as they transact in their job. Additionally, our competition already had a tool, so we know to stay relevant, to have you know the table stakes to be in the business, we needed to also develop a similar tool. Plus, one of our core values is to be easy to business with. And that value system drives us every day to continue to evolve this uh, configure price quote tool of Compass. Now, the tool has your three main elements of every CPQ tool. We present our product offering. We offer some ability to do filtering and characteristics. 
uh, product configuration, system configurations, the initial compass release had what we call like a simple specials request, meaning that I configured the majority of my solution. I just need something that we're not offering in the configuration. The CAD drawings I talked about, and then ultimately providing a quote to our tool, I mean, to our, our channel partners. That was Compass 1.0, our initial release. While that sounds good, the overall architecture was really made it up of two core elements. We made a decision early on that SAP would be our master data source, that, that one source of truth where we put our configuration logic, our pricing, our customer master, um, discount structures, currency, everything that falls under that master data element we wanted in SAP. Well, once we made that decision, we had the challenge of trying to figure out, well, how do we take that SAP data and expose it out to our channel, you know, in a web-based environment? And that's really where that Configit relationship started. We utilized Configit to extract out all that data out of SAP, utilizing their configuration engine, and then built a user interface around that using the Configit tool set. That really defined our Compass 1.0, the user experience and configuration engine of Configit and SAP underlying it. The drawing element was Kadena's part solutions, which is shown there. As I mentioned, as you configure, we build out a data string that gets passed on to part solutions, and they render that 3D drawing based on that configuration we just designed. And then we use ClickView internally to kind of tie together all the analytics, so we really have a good understanding on what's happening inside Compass, what people are quoting, how our channel is engaging us. Again, that all sounds good, but it had its fair number of challenges. First and foremost, we were behind our competition. I wouldn't say we were a late adopter, I'll just say we were late. So we knew we had some catch up to do. And the interesting thing is when you have nothing, you hear some comments, but when you put something out, if your something isn't equal or better than your competition, you hear a lot of feedback. So while something is better than nothing, something is not always best. We needed a richer user experience. I think we all have a higher demand on what a digital experience needs to be as we engage digitally in our lives every day. And while we had a good user experience, I wouldn't say it met the standard we really wanted to put forward. We wanted a tool that went beyond configuration. Anybody can have a configuration tool. We really wanted a digital platform that includes configuration as well as other elements on how we want to digitally engage our customer. And then we had this small technical problem. Compass 1.0 was running on Configure Quote 7. We know we needed to go to 9, which was the, the current version back in 2017. Um, and that really required us to revisit and potentially rewrite our user experience. So with all those challenges in front of us, we moved forward and launched Project Apollo. Now, Project Apollo is also when we started our partnership with CoolShop. Back in 2017 at the Configured CLM conference in Florida, we met two gentlemen, Mattia and Enrico, from CoolShop, and that really started this relationship we had to drive forward Project Apollo to challenge how we think about what a CPQ tool should do, what the digital experience is, and then how we move forward from there. But as we kicked that project off, we wanted to make sure we truly understood our customer journey. What do they need in a configuration tool? How do they want to interact with that tool? What is the extended elements of CPQ that would help them deal with their end customer? What I often like to refer to is that 360 degrees of configuration and quoting, not just giving them a quote, but really giving them tools to help them engage and be and be successful in their business. Part of that customer journey mapping, we did some of the standard things. We defined the personas of our customer to make sure that we understood what their requirements were, how they interacted, what their expectations were, to really make sure that we understood the journey. And then as we built out the Apollo release of Compass, we kept referring back to, does this meet the personas that we believe will be utilizing this tool to ensure that when we give them the tool, it truly does uh, hit their needs. So then this gets us to what I like I referred to before, the extended CPQ model of, of the Apollo release in a Compass, or we sometimes call it Compass 2.0. You know, certainly we had product selection, but we really wanted to enhance that more, really model selection, model filtering, to help the user drive down to what the right product is for their application. Once we had that, yes, we have product configuration, we have system configuration, but we also added in what we 
call extended configurations. Sometimes in SAP, you can't get to the configuration logic you want or the way it extracts to config it isn't the type of user experience we want on the configuration space. Working with CoolShop and their cool sales platform, it gave us the ability to put another layer on that configure, configuration experience to give the user experience more aligned to what we wanted. We put more advanced special functionality in. We really wanted a better way to capture where the specials were occurring. Because if you get a, a, a special enough times, maybe that special should become a standard configuration option. Uh, CAD drawings continue, and then the custom calculations. Uh, a couple words on custom calculations. As you build a system, we need to make sure that all of the configured elements work together and meet whatever engineering specs you have. It was a real demand from our channel that we build in that engineering logic into our tool because that helps them quote quickly. One thing our channel tells us all the time, the faster they can quote, the more productive they are. No longer are the days where they want to wait an hour, a day, a week to get their quotes. They want to quote when they want to quote, whenever that time of day is. And giving them that engineering logic into the tool really enables them to, to do that on their own. And then the last leg, this is really where I get to the, the CPQ plus. We're not just giving them a quote, we're giving them the ability to manage that quote internally, to do their margin calculations, to see list prices, to do distributor net pricing, to offer multiple types of printouts. Printouts that not only give them their quote who purchased from Columbus McKinnon, but a quote that they can then give to their end customer. We also look at how then we start to feed that quote back into our ERP systems. If the world was a perfect place, we would have one ERP system, but we don't. Like many companies, we have many different ERP systems. And while we are slowly moving to one, we need to, to still serve those other ERPs. So we are always looking at how can we start to feed back into our ERP systems uh, these quotes to reduce the amount of time that our channel, um, our customer service group uses to keying orders in. That came out to be what we call Compass 2.0. A little bit on the, the offering itself, as you see here, SAP continued on in its role, but Configure Quote changed in its role. It really is our, is our backbone configuration engine. It's where all that custom code relies, and all of that user experience was redone and moved into the Cool Sales tool, which is the development piece that Cool Shop brought, brought to Compass 2.0. Additionally, in 2018, we launched a PIM initiative. Uh, for those of you who don't know, PIM is uh, product information management. It is all of the marketing data about all of our products. It's, it's not just what's in your ERP system. It is the pictures, the videos, attributes, characteristics, you know, the romance narrative of what your product is. All that PIM data is incredibly rich and useful. We use it on our websites. We use it in our marketing material. We use it to respond to our channel partners who desire marketing material for their websites. And we decided it was important to incorporate that into our Compass experience. So as people are configuring, they get a visual experience of what they're configuring. If they don't know why a bronze hook would be more important than a stainless steel hook, they can click on a little button and see why that is more important. What is, what is the value proposition of that bronze hook over the stainless steel? They can download brochures. It's kind of like that one-stop shop of, we're not just allowing them to configure, we're trying to educate and guide them through that configuration as well. So the integration of PIM was an important step for us as well in the Compass 2.0 journey. So getting back to my overall architecture side, you can see how this has evolved from our original Lisa Compass. SAP is still there. Config it now is, is really just that core configuration engine for us. And then the cool shop layer now is that rich user experience, as well as some other things around quote, quote management, a degree of security. We have role level security to allow our channel partners that have different roles within their organization. Uh, we, as I mentioned, the PIM product is built in there. We utilize InRiver as our PIM. Cadenas continues to move forward as our drawing and rendering piece. And then ultimately click view for, for data analytics. And it's this group of systems that has defined our Compass 2.0 platform that we move forward with today. So that essentially is a bit on our CPQ journey. And I would, I don't know, John. There are a few questions, Mark, that came up while we were while we were uh, talking. The first one is why the ERP and not a PLM, which is a product lifecycle management uh, as a master for the variant configurations. Yeah. Um, 
Well, the, the easy answer is, is we don't have a full featured populated PLM. So we made the internal decision that we wanted SAP to be that configuration and master data engine, because really that's what we had already started to build out and we wanted to leverage that work that has already been invested. The next question is what happens when you're entering dimensions as a part of a requirement for which the CAD model or the part number does not exist? Do you create a new part number and where do you store the order bomb? Um, let me see, I have to break that up into a couple of pieces. Well, the, the, there is not a new part number created for each dimensional element. That, that comes out of the KMAT. And I think in the demonstration that John will share soon, you'll see how we pull that dimensional data in to, to create the model. The order bomb itself is kept down in the ERP systems. There's a, the sales bomb would sit in SAP because that's kind of built out through the configuration logic, but, it, which, but the order and then engineering bomb would sit down in the ERP itself. And I think to build on that, you're gonna find as we go through the demo that we're really doing this guided uh, configuration uh, experience for the customer. And so that, that question about when you're entering dimensions that, that really can't be done, we really prevent the customer from doing that in many cases outside of our specials process. And then the final question we'll get to as well when we do the demo is, is it, uh, is it CAD uh, or, or, or PLM agnostic? Does it work for any combination of CAD and PLM? And I can say that what you're, what you're gonna find uh, for us anyway for the CAD portion is, is that you're going to see any number of, I think it's 67 different, uh, uh, different platforms that we will actually, we can, we can support here. Yeah, internally we use SolidWorks and Team Center, but when we work with uh, Cadena's Part Solutions, they transfer that into their own modeling solution that we can then pass on these dimensions and they construct the models themselves. So John, let me uh, make you presenter. Thank you, Mark. What we have today is, is Compass 2.0 or, or Apollo. And this has many of the different features that Mark was talking about. For starters, uh, we have this feature called a help curtain that gives customers the ability to, on any screen, pull up this curtain that has an overlay that shows people what you can do on that particular screen. And on many screens, there are so many things because people wanted a very compact uh, uh, interface. There are sometimes we actually have more than one curtain that can come up. The other thing that was really important to our customers is the ability to customize the experience for them. And so you can see here, we can upload our own logos, upload our own terms and conditions. And in some cases too, uh, we can start putting settings on here so that if they want to create an RFQ for their customers, they can plug in what kind of margin or markup they would like to see. As well, we enable them to customize their experience by selecting different characteristics within the configurations and choosing their own default values. So with no further ado, I'm actually going to go through and do a configuration. It's a pretty simple uh, experience for our customers. They select the product that they're interested in. In this case, we'll do a power hoist. And in our business, a few things are, are very important, headroom being one of them. And so as long as our product has a suspension on them, you can actually sort by the headroom. You can sort or filter by different product lines, and you can see if I select CM, I'm left with the Lodestar and the, the Lodestar Classic. I'll select the Lodestar NH, and this will bring up the configuration. So as Mark had mentioned before, what you'll find is, is we try to give visual cues to our customer to let them actually decide what's best for them. And if the visual cues aren't enough, you can actually go in, click on this information button, and it will let you know why you may or may not want to make that selection for that particular product. So for now, I'm going to do a hook mounted hoist and put in 10 foot of lift. We'll make it a half ton, and you'll see that it's actually guiding me through this process, highlighting the things in red, letting me know what choices are there. 
here's a case where it's telling me I have a choice, but most people when they when they select the Lodestar do single speed, but I have this option to make it a variable speed drive. And so when I do that, I'm actually going to get different choices as well down below. You'll notice that this chapter here says variable speed. We'll go through. In the case here, we offer a couple different options, whether we want the controls on it or not for radios as opposed to pendants. And in five or six different clicks already, what we have here is, is uh, this goes green. We have the option at this point in time uh, to see my pricing description with all of the options that I selected. Here it's telling me what my adder was uh, for going with variable speed. Uh, it's got the powder coat adder here. And you'll notice we've got these YouTube looking buttons here. And what that does is give us the ability to go in and grab uh, a couple different things. The first you're going to see is the preview that we provide. And then I will show you specifically the different CADs, uh, CAD models that we support here to answer the question that was asked previously. So what comes up is this 3D CAD preview where we have actually sent the, uh, the bar set as Mark had mentioned into uh, Cadenas to let them process the drawing. And these are all of the uh, drawing formats, whether it's Creo or NX or Inventor, AutoCAD, you name it, it's there. Uh, as well, there's this PDF data sheet, as opposed to generating it on the fly here, I've uh, previously done this for you. What you get is a drawing that looks like this, that comes up, has your drawing in three views, as well, it provides the customer the ability to have that very same uh, 3D preview that we had with the ability to draw attention to other elements on there. Moving forward, we have the option here to go through and print, and there's two different uh, RFQs that you can print out here. Uh, you can actually do an RFQ that we provide our customer or one that they can provide the end user. Uh, again, I've previewed this one, and what you can see is that it's going to give them a price it's going to give them the image and this is customizable as well based on our selections uh, and gives them some sort of idea as to what it is they're receiving and what our customers really wanted was a few things they wanted an image that was representative as well they wanted the benefits to help them sell the product that they just got done selecting so we try to give them this right out of the PIM to give their customers some assurance that what they just ordered was going to meet the needs of the customer that they had engaged with. Both as an internal, as an external check, anything that was selected that was not defaulted is shown up in blue and highlighted so that the customer can pay extra special attention to those items where they they uh, selected something that wasn't as standard. So you can see I selected the variable speed drive. Uh, that wasn't a default. The half ton was not a default. Uh, and I, I did select this interface cable for the VFD. All those things were, were not on the default. As Mark had mentioned, one of the abilities that we have is this ability to go through and do a crane kit, which actually models more than one configuration at a time. So I'm going to go through and do a brief one, a top running single girder uh, crane. And this is gonna showcase some of the ways that we go through and, and can combine different K-mats together. In this particular case, we'll do a 10 ton, 20 foot of lift. We'll do a 45 foot span. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna guide me right through this process of being able to only select those items. If I'm in a hurry, for instance, I'm gonna chase the red, which is gonna get me right through only the basics. But at any point in time, I'd be able to go through and select in, do I want radios? Do I want rain covers? Uh, do I want anything else? This little hesitation you're seeing is because in the background, what we're doing is, is the complex calculations uh, that enable us to determine what is this girder selection. And we're doing that through C-sharp right now. Um, you will notice one of the preferences that we had selected was I don't wanna see a cap channel. Uh, this was the standard, but when I preferred it, I said I want my default to be no cap channel. 
Is there a question mark? Yeah, there's a one question which I think will apply well now. It's uh, does it support ETO scenarios or only CTO scenarios? How are the ETO configurations updated as part of the configuration? So I'll do something right now that will actually do that. So right now it's actually confirming that the end truck is going to be sized up appropriately. And now it's going to ask me for my runway rail size. And then I'll show you how we would actually do an engineered special here. So when this is done, you're going to see that I have an end truck bumper size here. And it's going to tell me that the only bumper size that's available to me, the appropriate size is a size 50. Let's say for some instance, somebody wanted something uh, a little bit different. They come in here, select a special bumper. Uh, maybe we want a ramp style number 80 uh, bumper. And if I do that, a few things are going to happen. It's going to make it so that I cannot at this point in time generate a drawing or a quote and that's done purposely because we don't want the customer to accidentally think that this quote has actually been uh, priced out yet and we don't want the customer to uh, think that the lead time has been generated so what you're going to see is it'll say requires specials and encrypted and impending specials everywhere here to be able to go through and actually have somebody do this we would go through, ask for request for approval of specials. Here's what was special about it. It's got a ramp style number 80 bumper. I'd put in any other comments I have over here and I would click on submit. And this would go to the top of the line for our customers so that they could go through and look at that. And this is something that we frequently Pareto because this, this special here is actually tied to this characteristic so that we know do we need to have a new standard offering. Yeah, and I, th I think it's good to note that the workflow now is done within Compass. It used to be a process of emails back and forth, and many times you lose some of that, that transactional dialogue and how we got to whatever the special or engineered element is. All of that back and forth now is captured within Compass, so we have a good record of how we got to that final engineered solution. Right. And as Mark had mentioned before, one of the abilities that this has is now we have this system that's composed of many other KMATs. So you've got the hoist, the end truck, the pendant, the bridge panel, the electrification on here. And had I not had a special, what I would get is a drawing that kind of shows people what their, what their crane system is going to look like in the building that it has. I put in a pit on this particular one so that uh, people could see that they could lower it further. As well, it comes up with the three view drawings just like it did before with the building outline in red. Additionally, when you go through and do this and have more than one system on here, your order summary is gonna show that. So here's the original, uh, the original hoist that I had created. And now here is the top running single girder system with each of the prices broken out to allow the customer to see exactly what they've received. And just like before, you're getting the, the features and benefits that helps them to sell this particular unit. Uh, one other question, John, we have is what viewer do you use for the 3D CAD preview? That viewer is actually provided by Cadenas Park Solutions. So that frame that comes up is actually their viewer. Um, it's not a it wasn't a product we selected and implemented. It was part of the solution they bring forward. Right. And this particular one that is a, a, an exact duplicate of it is just uh, embedded straight into PDF yeah. so that all customers can see that in case they don't have their own viewers. Okay. I know we're at the half hour, actually a couple minutes over. Um, and are there any additional questions anyone would have? There was just one more question that came in. Oh, um, perfect. In case of the bumper number 80 special, a workflow gets initiated it, and there is a handover to the engineering team to estimate and update the cost. My question is, does the engineering team get the request order? Can they get it in their CAD environment to check the feasibility of the design? So they can download the uh, they can download that drawing to see that and, and generally speaking that is done there. They also have their own CAD systems uh, that where they may have that bumper style 
already there so that they could actually uh, copy and paste the bumper that is special into here so that it, it's a, a very fast thing for them. So yes. Well, thank you very much for having us today. Yes, thank you.